the Euros may have been cancelled, but you can still watch some footballing legends touring Europe this summer. Harry Redknapp and his assistant manager, John Barnes, <laughs> are back for a new series of Harry's Heroes, and this time they are up against Germany on their home soil. Harry, enjoy joining us now. Lovely to see your faces. Um, Harry, <laughs> how hard was it to get everybody together to do this? Well, it was quite easy, Polly, really. I think we enjoyed it so much last year that most of the lads wanted to come back again, you know. And this time, going on a road trip and actually, you know, going to France, going to Italy, on to Germany and just being as a team. And, you know, they've, they've been out the game, a lot of boys, for 15, 20 years in some cases. So it was like going back to the, the old times on the coach, having a, having a laugh and... Everybody ribbing each other, lots of banter. Yeah, we absolutely yeah. loved it. They were all in bed by 11, though, weren't they? <laughs> yeah, but that was John. John got my bed early. He's a bit, he was a bit of a disciplinarian, John. He, he didn't stand no nonsense. And, uh, and I think they were tired at 11 o'clock anyway. The what days of staying out until 2 in the morning. Oh, is, yeah, is that right? Well, the, the last series seemed to focus on the players getting into shape. And if I'm right, did they all sort of lose a total of eight stone between them? In the last show? Yeah. Yes, because, of course, the last show, that's what it was about. It's about yes. all players getting fit, losing weight. But the second show was slightly different because of the, the, the success and the, and, and the fact that the, the public just really took to the characters of the players. That, yes, the second show was about getting fit, but it was more about looking at the characters of the players like Paul Merson, you know, Ra Razor Ruddock. So, yeah. um, yes, we were trying to lose weight and get fit, uh, but not, not as much as the, as, the, as the first show. And did they manage to, because they'd done so well in the first show and they lost though, that collective eight stone, had they managed to keep it off or had, had it all crept back on again? Well, some us put it back on, but it was always going to be more difficult to lose more weight again because, you know, if you are a particular weight and you haven't you know, been exercising for a while and you lose a lot of weight, you really aren't going to lose the same amount again, you know, six months or eight months later. Uh, but the second show was, I think, much more interesting because it was more to do with the dynamic of how the players get along, mm. the problems that they had, which I was in the world, of, like Paul Merton, for example. So it was more to do with the human factor of, of, of each player. Well, I mean, he went on to say, actually, that this show saved his life, sort of having that time with you and being able to talk so openly about things. I mean, the interesting thing was I didn't know Paul was going through that. You know, when you retire and you speak to every, everybody now and again, and, of course, because of the bravado and the magic machismo of, of footballers, you don't really open up. So the first time I was aware of, of, of Merce was when I actually saw it on television. Even when we were together, we weren't aware of it. Well, he, uh, Paul, Paul was very open and said that uh, he had got... Um alcohol, gambling addiction, um, that he was drinking 35 pints a week and, and had you know, some major, major issues. And I always wonder whether, Harry, you know, that's... Uh, the, the, the situation is that, you know, you are a, a, a footballer, like a racehorse, really, um, and, uh, and it's, it's what your life is. It's everything that you're focused on, being the absolute best. And then when it's gone, when you're not a footballer anymore, um, that, um, that you have nowhere else to look. Yeah, for sure, Philip. I mean, you know, you come in every day, you walk in the dressing room, you're there with, with the boys. It's like, it's a, you know, it's like still being in school, really. You're just having the fun, you're playing, doing something you love, playing football, getting paid to do something you really enjoy. And then suddenly it stops. And in so many cases, it's what do I do with my life now? I've got no skills to go into anything else. And it could become a very lonely place. You've been in the public eye. I imagine a little bit like show business and suddenly someone lose, you know, they've been doing a job and they lose their position and then they can't get any work. It can be very difficult. So, um, yeah, and even Lee Hendry, I didn't realise Lee Hendry, uh, who, who's in the programme, that he'd had massive problems as well. And he comes out and talks about his problems. And, uh, yeah, you just don't know what goes on in people's lives, do you? You know, once they, they finish, uh, finish the football, they seem to disappear and it's, it can be very difficult for some of the boys. And I think it's but quite I think nice what we have to understand as well. I think we have to understand as well is that players go through this while they're actually playing because Paul was going through this while he was still playing. Yeah. Tony Adams. So as much as we think it's also when they finish playing and we say okay because they have to fill a void, we're not players are normal human beings and in your job, normal human beings have these issues. And Paul Merson was having this issue even when he was playing. So you know, it's not just about when you finish playing. It's just, you know, you are, you are a normal human being who has trials and tribulations. But that's also what's important about this as well, is that you get to see footballers, be them ex-footballers, um, as normal people, because normally you sort of, they're held up as these kind of godlike characters. So it's quite nice to just see who they really are. That, for me, is the most pleasing part of the show, because, of course, we hold footballers to a higher standard, as we've seen throughout, even this lockdown, in terms of expecting them to do certain things when we don't expect that from society. And I think this show shows that, 
footballers are, and particularly our generation, are normal people from the inner city communities growing up as a kid. Then all of a sudden, you're thrust into the limelight and you're expected to do something different. So I think that this really shows the fact, and that's why people like it, because they want to see that people are just like them rather than being superior to them. Well, and the, as far as you're concerned, uh, you've, you're... I suppose having to come to terms with the fact that you can't play anymore because of this freak accident that you had at your son's wedding. <laughs> yes, I, I, I don't want to show you again, but I've, I've dislocated, it's still there. I've dislocated oh my gosh! AC joint. And I had a ruptured knee, which, is, which, which was even worse. So I was looking forward to be playing with the lads and, you know, being part of the team. But of course, when that happened, I had to become Harry's assistant. And I suppose I would probably be the most sensible one to be Harry's assistant because if it was Razor, then I think we would have been in trouble. <laughs> I can't, I can't, yeah. can't they fit? Can't they fit? I know that's really sticky out here. They don't have to. It's, it's just the way it looks. I mean, that, that, that is not a... I've got full movement and they say, if you don't need an operation, why have it? Yeah, so if I, was, if I was vain or if I was young, uh, I didn't need to go on the beach, then maybe I would have it done, but it's fine. Harry, how are you doing in lockdown? How's Sandra? Yeah, we're good. Holly, everybody's fine. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the good news for me is that golf golf courses are open again. Oh, so yeah. I can get out of Sandra's way for a few hours a day, you know. And um, so, yeah, I'm off this afternoon looking forward to it, getting out. And, you know, it's that's great news to say you can play in twos with one other person yeah. and um, you keep social distancing. But getting out and playing golf has really uh, been a, a real godsend Blessing, for me. Yeah, you know. How's the technology been for you? Oh, I'm used, to, Philip. I'm so bad. Sandra's, she's improved. Him, she really has helped me. I, without her doing it, I wouldn't have a clue. I mean, I'm so useless. <laughs> I'm in the old world, and uh, but she's she's picked it up very well. And uh, she's she's uh, she wants she, she wants pay at the moment for all the work she's been doing. <laughs> you're telling me. <laughs> and how about you, John? I suppose uh, not, not, are you are you uh, are you in the 21st century when it comes to technology? I think I'm, I'm like Harry, Are exactly you? the same. I mean, I, just before we went on the on, on the direct, the producer was talking to me about what to do with the phone. I said, "Listen, I've got a picture. You can see me. I'm not touching anything else." <laughs> yeah, yeah, just leave it. We're like doing that. social. We're doing we're doing distance learning with the kids at school, and they're up in there with their computers at school. I don't even help them because if I touch anything, <laughs> I'm I'm worse than Harry. I can tell you because Harry's actually showed me how to actually do a little. Um, voicemail on your phone instead of texting. So even Harry's further ahead than me. There you go. Um, Harry, we should ask you why you're here. I mean, lots of questions about the football season, when it should restart, if it should restart this season. I just wanted to know your thoughts on it. It's so difficult, Holly. You know, everybody wants to see Liverpool win the league if they're fair people, because, I mean, they deserve it. They've been amazing this year. So that is the one driving factor for me to try to get a finish to the season. But it's difficult, you know, but lads have got to play. Are they, do they feel that they can, you know, with their health, with the, the virus, can they, you know, can they, they carry it, take it back home? It's so many issues. And, um, and to relegate teams and not play on their stadiums and no crowds, I just don't. Honestly, we've all got different opinions. Everybody will have a different view. I don't know what they're going to do. They certainly, for me, can't do like a points per game and relegate teams. I think that would be really unfair. And John? Well, of course, I want to see Liverpool win the league, but for me, it's bigger than that. It's about the integrity of football. So it's not just about Liverpool winning the league. It's about Leeds coming up, if they're going to get come up, and Fulham and about Crew who are in League Two coming up. You've played this far. You've come this far. You can't just give Liverpool the title and say we're not going to relegate or promote anybody else, no matter how far they are ahead. And I don't see why we can't finish the season. Not yet, but as soon as it is safely able to play football, yeah. maybe six months, then take two months off to finish the league and start the next season. Yeah. So... You know, it's about the integrity of football. That's why we have to finish the season, not just for Liverpool, but for all the teams. All right. Guys, thank you both thank very you both much friends. indeed. Harry's Heroes, uh, it's uh, Euro having a laugh uh, tonight at nine on, uh, on ITV. Thank you, guys. Lovely to see you. Bye-bye. Nice Take, Take care. Take care. Bye now. Thank you.